I am thrilled today to be joined by Josh Wood. Josh is the global head of business travel partnerships at Booking.com. Josh, welcome. Hey, happy to be here, Tony. Now, this is our first live live, and we're here at the uh, in London at the Business Travel Show. I don't know about you, but it feels great to be out and about. It's amazing. I've I've goosebumps. I can't believe we're actually here. It's been <laughs> like almost two years since we've been able to travel. Crazy. Uh, you know, you had to swab a bunch of times. <laughs> But, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to write a blog post about the difficulty in getting here. Yeah. Well, but now that I'm here, I'm happy. Uh, I got to go home tomorrow, so we'll see what that's all about. Yeah, exactly. And, and what's really been great is that so many other people are here too. Yes. They're joining. You can yes. hear them. Like it's yeah. it's. Um, you look around the room. You look at all of the various suppliers, and everyone's just so thrilled to be back at Business Travel. It's something that connects us all together. So it's. It's been amazing to actually do this stuff in person. All right, so let's jump in, get, get down to business here. Uh, how's business been? Yeah, well, it's no surprise. Uh, business is not as good as it was back in 2019, but we certainly see green shoots of recovery, as, as Glenn likes to say. Yeah. Know, he talks about green shoots a lot. And um, I think like coming to this event is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Yep. Business travel is returning. Does this event look like it did in 2019? No. But it's way more people than we thought would be here. It's a start. Yeah. It's a start, right? We got to start somewhere. All right, let me, I want to zero in on you guys are the largest hotel LTA in the world. You got a ton of content. Uh, I want to focus on the private accommodations part. Okay. Um, I want your opinion about the, what you see in terms of business travel and whether there's um, kind of a move towards more private accommodations. Yeah, so, so what I can tell you is, you know, I've been looking after business travel or involved in business travel for Booking.com now for six or seven years. And uh, what's been amazing is six years ago, we talked about, well, we have apartments, we have service apartments, bed and breakfasts, those sort of things. And travel managers would say, oh, no, no, like, I'm not <laughs> sure, safety yes. and security, we don't do that. That's not something in our program. Uh -huh. Um, and now it's like, oh, that's great, and we get more of it. So um, talking to all the travel managers yesterday, they, they're really excited about that sort of content because their employees are demanding it. And I, I think it's a natural thing, right? If, if you're traveling for one day, go ahead, stay at the airport by the hotel. Right. It's perfectly normal. Um, but if you're going to be in town for three, four, five days, having something like a service department just becomes so much easier for the employee. They get their own space, mm -hmm. no one's coming into it, they can make their own dinner. Um, watch something by the TV, that, those sort of things, and it just becomes more natural and you have more space so you feel more secure. How about this concept of remote workers, right? Like, I know everybody on, in our company at Circo, we're all remote now, right? Yeah. Because of various reasons. But I think people are becoming these travel nomads. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be a nice part of uh, a, a growing kind of trend in the business. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we can even see that at Booking. So one of the things we've done at Booking.com is we've said that for up to 30 days a year, you can, um, well, it ends up being 20 work days, so it's a month, essentially. Uh, you can work anywhere in the world. And Very we see cool. that. I mean, yeah, it's, we, it's, I mean, it's we, so cool. We, the travel company should be like that. Like yeah, that, right? yeah, it's, it's been great. So people that uh, haven't been able to travel home to see their families and stuff like that have been able to take a month and uh, go back home to, to wherever they're from, you know, work from Greece. I, I've watched... Uh, people's what I thought were virtual backgrounds of the beach and then they, no, no, <laughs> yes, we're yeah, really at the beach. Yeah, like, really it's, beach. it's so been amazing watching colleagues call in from like villas and stuff like that. That's it's, great. It's been great. <laughs> you mentioned your CEO, uh, Glenn Fogel. Yep. Uh, I want to talk about a concept he talks about a lot, which is the connected trip. For some who might not get it, give me the, give me the elevator pitch. Yeah, so I mean the connected trip is everything related to your trip, right? So it's how do you get to the airport? It's flying to your destination. It's how do you get from the airport that you land at to your uh, hotel or your uh, apartment? And then it's everything you want to do while you're there, whether it's restaurants, whether it's activities, events, those sort of things. It's everything related to travel, all in one place where you can book it all in a single ecosystem and track everything. And if you have an issue, you have one point of contact. One place to go. Which is, um, you know, it, it's it's pretty familiar for like business travel. We're used to our PAs booking for us, and you get the folder, and here's where you're going, and, <laughs> exactly. and that's the connected trip. Yep. But now, you know, we're bringing that digitally, digitally. which is what's really exciting. Okay, I want to talk uh, in business travel. One of the age-old problems has been hotel attached. So you you've got an eligible trip defined as I'm taking a trip, I book my air, I'm staying more than one night, and I'm not staying with my grandmother. 
that's eligible for a hotel booking. Historically in the business, maybe 50% attach a hotel to that. It's an age old problem. Tell me why you think it is, you know, 2021 that we still have this issue. Yeah, so I, I mean, we're the recipient of a lot of that road travel, right? Bingo. So yep. if, I, if I go into our data and I, you know, insert any company that you can think of, chances are their travelers are traveling account. with us yeah. for, for business and they're telling us they're traveling for business. I, I think the problem historically has been the tools that we give our travelers aren't very good. Like, it's super easy to book on booking.com. It's not super easy to book on a lot of other corporate booking tools. And then, you know, the, the incentive is not necessarily there for the employee to use that tool because they're paying anyway and they're expensing it. It's not like the flight where the company's paying for the flight. Um, so I, I think that's a lot of it, um, which is why I'm really excited with what we're doing. I was with you just guys. to say, the, my next question is the lead in, right? Yeah. You know, we have, a, we have a phenomenal partnership that started, you know, over a year ago uh, where you're using a branded version of our Xeno uh, uh, product. Tell me how the product, project's going. Yeah, so it's, it's going really well. Um, you know, we've had challenges. You'll always have challenges whenever you're talking about migrating hundreds of thousands of companies it's onto crazy, a new platform, right? which crazy. is just amazing. Um, I think one of the things uh, to really think about is for Booking.com to take our customers and say, We're, we entrust in another platform, um, that's a huge leap of faith. And, and we only did it because we saw that the underlying technology, we saw that the user experience was better than anything else out there. And realistically, if we were going to build it ourselves, it would take us like five years. Um, we don't want to wait five years. Yeah. So it was great. We had already been working with Circo before on our partnership level. So it was you know, the perfect match of, of building the next generation in, in business travel uh, sort of product. And I think what's been really beneficial on the Circo side as well is we have helped you guys look at, no, hey, here's, here's what the traveler's perspective is. Here's a ton of data. Here's experimentation. Here's an approach. And we're just making business travel better for everyone. So whether they're on Booking.com for business or whether they're on Circo Zeno, they can benefit from that partnership. No, I mean, we love it. I can, the product guys get so jazzed when they're looking at data about where people click around, how we're changing the UI, just making slight tweaks to kind of get them to that next level, make it that much easier. So great partnership. We've just started. Uh, last question, what's next? Yeah, what's next? Uh, so right now we have flights and accommodation. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll have rental cars in place. We should, within the next week or two, add our first rail content, and we'll expand that rail content out into next year. Um, I expect to see more and more of Booking Holdings brands taking uh, part of Booking for Business. So we're hopeful that you know GoDis content, Priceline content sits in there mid-2022 or so which already, I can't believe we're talking about 2022. <laughs> this, this year went by so I know. quickly. I know. Um, but yeah, over the next three, four or five years, we're just going to continue to expand what you can do with it and bring more of that connected trip in one place. And we started this with aspirations to be global. There is no limitation as to where we can source this thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're a global brand. Right. So, um, you know, Booking.com itself is available in 43 languages. However many countries, there's a couple of countries we're not in due to various sanctions and those sort of things. But um, yeah, this is a global product uh, that, that we're bringing to the world. All right, cool. We're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're going to drop you into some place I call the Xeno Zone. Oh, geez. Some, <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> some fast hits. Try okay. to find a little bit more about Josh, the person. Okay, yep. so you have a critical business decision to make, and you have one phone call to make to anybody. Yeah. Who gets that phone call? Yeah, so I, I'd probably say my mentor, uh, Eddie Abraham. So back uh, before I joined Booking.com, like I was never in travel. I'm, I'm an e-commerce product and marketing guy. Okay. Um, I sort of got sucked into to, uh, to travel. It's been a great adventure, but it, it wasn't where my career started. Um, Eddie and I co-founded a company called Osbo and built that from zero up to, to an exit. Um, in seven years or so, and I watched him do that many times with companies. He's a serial entrepreneur, and it's always great to get his perspective because so he is—he's—he's uh, he's, he's, he's he's a great your go-to guy. Go guy. Yeah, All right, absolutely. Cool. All right, three dinner guests. Yep. Living, dead, any period of time. You got three dinner guests. Who's going to be at your table, Josh? Ah, uh, 
I'd love to hang out with Richard Branson for a night. Like that guy is fascinating. <laughs> you might not have a second night if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but, but I, I, I think he's just a, like a party, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so we got Richard Branson. Yeah. Uh, who, who else should be there? Um, Eddie will be there because because that'll just be fun cool. too. Cool. And then a third. I'd, I'd kind of like to hang out with Elon Musk. Like, uh, again, uh, okay. like I think it would be uh, certainly an innovator. Uh, the conversation's going to go in a direction that I have no idea where it's going to go. I can figure out how to pronounce his uh, son's name, uh, which would be good. Yeah, okay, good starter. Yeah. And between the two of Richard Branson and then Elon, I could watch him fight over, you know, hey, I got this space. Did first? you really yes. get this space? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine dining yeah. or, or dive bar with, this, uh, with that gang? Yeah, dive bar. Dive bar. Yeah. They're, now, they're, normally you'd be in a dive bar anyway. Exactly. You think they'd go for no, that? No, I, I don't want fine little tiny yeah. things. Like, just give me yeah, a hunk yeah, of yeah. meat. And a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a pint of beer. All right. Yeah. Uh, last, last thing I'll ask you. Um, subject matter expert, been in the business a while now. Uh, give us a prediction. Something you think is going to happen in our industry in the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so, so I think we're going to see continued consolidation, right? And, and we're seeing that. We've seen we're a see, lot of it, yeah. We're seeing people that start off as traditional, um, you know, uh, digital, hey, we don't need a TMC. Yeah. If I think about trip actions or if I think about travel perks, say, you know what, actually, we do need a TMC. Yeah. Um, and I think the TMC industry in general has really hurt during the pandemic. And they're, they, there was already a trend towards consolidation, and yeah. I can only imagine that that continues. All right, good. Listen, Josh, it's been a pleasure having you here. I want to thank you for joining us in our first lot, actually live and in person. Yeah, uh, there's no uh, <laughs> virtual screen. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. So I want to thank you for, for joining us. I want to thank everybody else who join, has joined us today, uh, for, and hopefully they'll join our next installment of yeah. the Xeno Labs Live. So for Tony DeStafo and Josh Wood signing off from London here at the Business Travel Show. Thanks.